Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, everything you wanted to know about bevels. So I got a note recently from a viewer named Barry uh, who lives in Texas, and he sent some photographs of some uh, knives that he'd been working on recently. Um, and he said he wanted a little help with bevels, you know, kind of how wide to make them, some of the geometry and so forth. And it occurred to me as I was looking at them that, you know, I've done tons of videos where I'm doing sort of the more practical side of how to grind them. And we are going to get into that a little bit towards the end of this video. But I hadn't done too many about sort of just the general theory of how bevels work and, you know, how wide they should be and the the uh, geometry of them and so forth. So that's what we're going to mainly focus on today. But if you are interested in the sort of the practical side of it, we are going to get into that towards the end. All right. Let's get started. First point, all I'll be talking about today are flat bevels. There are a lot of ways to grind bevels. Flat, hollow, scandy, saber, convex, compound, and so on. But flat bevels are the most common and easiest to understand. If you understand the basic concepts here, you're well on your way to understanding the trickier grinds. Let's start with definitions. The bevel is this part, the face on your knife that tapers down to the cutting edge. In other words, it's what distinguishes a knife from a crowbar. As knife makers, we always start with some piece of material that's not sharp, and we have to make it sharp by grinding, filing, forging, or milling. So let's talk about how a knife works. A knife, at its simplest, is just a triangular-shaped device that displaces material by introducing a really skinny edge, parting the material, and then wedging it apart. Intuitively, we can figure that if this edge is really fat, it'll smash more than it will part. So let's cut this, a potato. We'll start by cutting it with this handy tool. Hmm, not so great. Okay, cutting tool number two. Okay, that works fine, but maybe not ideal for potatoes. Knife three, a chef's knife. Works great. Right tool for the job. But then let's say we want to go really sharp. Yeah, silky smooth, only one minor problem. A seven inch razor blade would fold up like a pretzel. Here's the point. As knife makers, we're always trying to optimize for two competing qualities, strength and cutting ability. Make no mistake, within certain boundaries, the more you have of one, the less you have of the other. The idea that there's such a thing as a perfect knife or a perfect edge is totally bogus. All you have are trade-offs. But ultimately, it all comes down to this, the cutting edge of the blade. So let's break that down. You as a knife maker have to make decisions about what a knife's going to be for. You've probably seen survival knives, camp knives, and so on that are made from quarter inch stock. These blades are nearly indestructible, but you take them out and you try to do fine cutting tasks with them, and no matter how much you sharpen them, they're never going to rival a razor blade. Okay, so let's mention another wrinkle. When you grind your bevel, with some exceptions like Scandi grinds, Japanese blades, and so on, you don't grind it all the way down to zero. Your bevel goes down to a certain point, and then there's a secondary edge or grind with a different angle. So your main bevel and your final little edge bevel, those are two different things. So let's talk about the main bevel angles. Technically, knife makers distinguish a saber grind, which is a flat grind that only comes part way up the blade from a conventional flat grind. But in practice, this is an academic distinction. Every time we grind a blade, we make a choice from grinding a really short little bevel, like Barry did, to grinding a super high grind, like you'd find on a chef's knife. So basically, you're looking to optimize for a particular use. Will you be cutting cloth? Flesh, vegetables, boxes, tape, fish bones, chicken bones. If you have a super specific use for a knife, like a sushi chef for instance, then you can really dial in the bevel. 
If not, you may want to make something more general, something that balances durability and cutting ability. A hunting knife, a utility knife, something like that. So whenever you make a knife, before you start grinding away, think about what uses that knife will have. One thing that you'll see among many knives, in my opinion, is that a lot of manufacturers these days are overly focused on making knives indestructible to the detriment of cutting ability. It's all very good and well to have a knife that'll survive a nuclear blast, but look, are you expecting your knife to be bombed by North Korea? Probably not. Let me jump in here to mention that today's video is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. They're a family-owned American manufacturer offering a wide selection of belts. Now, I've used many of their belts, including ceramic, aluminum oxide, and zirconium. The prices are good, and their focus is specifically on the knife-making community. Their basic aluminum oxide belts come in at a good price point and last a lot longer than some of the inexpensive belts that I've used in the past. Another thing that I've really been excited about is their ceramic belts for roughing in the 40, 60, and 120 grit range. Their performance is very competitive with the big manufacturers at about half the price. So check out their online shop by clicking the link in the description. All right, let's get down to the theory here. In order to understand different grinds, we have to be able to measure them. The simplest way to do this is the angle of the bevel. So there are two ways of doing this. One is the included angle, which is this, or the bevel angle, which is the angle off the axis this right here. Now one number is just twice the other. It's simple. Either one accurately describes the angle. Personally, I tend to talk about the angle off the axis because as knife makers, we're always gauging our angle with reference to the face of a tool, generally the platen of a belt grinder. Anyway, no matter how you measure it, a fairly small change in the angle makes a big change in how the bevel comes out and that, in turn, has a major effect on cutting ability. Let's demonstrate using this CAD program. Imagine we have a .0625 inch thick bar of steel. That's a sixteenth of an inch, or around one and a half millimeters. The reason I've picked this is, let's just imagine that we've split a one eighth inch bar in half. One eighth inch is a pretty common bar size. So we're only showing the bevel on one side of the knife, if that makes sense. So we can see that a bevel that kind of resembles the one Barry did in our example at the top of the show, it's somewhere in this 30 to 60 degree range. Obviously, we're subtracting from 90 degrees, so when it says 85 degrees here, that's 5 degrees off axis. So the difference between 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 degrees, that really travels up this edge a bunch. So when you hit around 4.5 degrees, you've got as much bevel as you can possibly get on a piece of steel this size and thickness. As I alluded earlier, when I'm grinding it, I'd just be holding the blade blank at that exact angle from the face of the grinder. 4 degree bevel, 4 degrees off axis, 4 degrees off the face of the platen. 5 degrees, 10 degrees, whatever, all you do is just maintain that angle on the grinder, and by definition, you end up with that angle of bevel on your knife. For you guys who are just starting out, all things being equal, you always want to maintain the exact same angle from one end of the knife to the other. That'll keep your bevel nice and even. But who really cares what the angle is? Look, you don't need to know a specific number. But what I'm getting at is that very subtle differences in the angle actually have a big implication in the geometry of the blade. That's important in how you grind them, but it's also important in cutting ability. Someday I'll do a video on this to demonstrate in measurable terms what I'm claiming here, but trust me, the difference in cutting ability between a 5 degree bevel and a 6 degree bevel is really quite substantial. The reason for this is that the more friction you create as you push this triangle of steel into whatever material you're cutting, the more resistance, the worse it cuts. I couldn't tell you the exact increase mathematically, but I suspect that if you graphed it, you'd find it wasn't just a straight line, it would have some kind of asymptotic curve, so that just a tiny change in the angle of the blade creates way more friction, and therefore a big increase or decrease in cutting ability. Not to get overly complicated, but it also depends on what you're cutting. Soft materials displace more easily, so cutting angle is probably less important if you're cutting, say, a chicken breast than a piece of wood. 
Anyway, reduced to simple terms, the more important that cutting is to you for a particular knife, the more you want to push that bevel up toward the spine. But that's not all. Two more things come into play here. Thickness of the blade and thickness of the edge. All right, let's model it again. We've got three model blades here. One's one sixteenth of an inch, one's an eighth, and one's a quarter inch thick. So if we look at them from the side, these bevels look exactly the same in the sense that they all come up to the same point on the blade. But this one's five degrees, this one's 10, and this is 20 off axis. So on this quarter inch model here, you'd be maxing out your bevel angle at around 15 degrees. Even if you take that bevel all the way up to the spine, that's the best you can do, which I can tell you would be a miserable cutting knife. So the lesson here is that you should go thin as humanly possible, right? Well, here's the flip side. The more material we remove from the blade, the weaker it gets. This has several implications. The most catastrophic of which is that a weak blade can break in half if you stress it. For instance, I could break this razor blade with my fingers, but even if it doesn't break, a thin blade can flex. In some cases, like boning a carcass, that actually may be handy. In some other cases, like a sword, a bunch of flexing or twisting could not only be deleterious to the quality of the blade, but could actually be dangerous to the user. Additionally, a very sharp, unsupported edge is more likely to chip or fold when in contact with hard objects. A cleaver for cutting bone needs to be thinner than a paring knife. Okay, last point with respect to bevels. Normal Western knives have a secondary bevel. So if we zoom in on this blade cross-section, we'll see that right down here, we actually didn't take this bevel all the way down to zero. What happens is that we grind to a certain thickness, and then that, in turn, has that tiny little secondary bevel, which is the one that we actually sharpen. Now, I'm not showing it sharpened here. In fact, this is where I would leave off grinding before heat treating a blade. Why do we not grind it right down to zero? Mainly because sharpening the entire bevel every single time we need to resharpen the blade would be an enormous pain in the neck. So we just sharpen this little teeny part and we can get it done quickly. What's the general point? Well, our bevel doesn't just matter at the top, I mean up here at the spine, it matters down here at the cutting edge. You could grind two blades at the exact same angle, but if we leave this edge too fat here, we'll have a blade that won't ever really be sharp because that cutting edge angle is not gonna be super sharp. So, is there a rule of thumb? Again, what are you planning to cut? If it's a pocket knife, something that'll be cutting string and tape and boxes, maybe you'll take it down to a hundredth of an inch. That's 10 thousandths of an inch. But if you're making a camp knife that's going to be chopping three inch oak branches and things like that, you might want to stay as high as 30 or 35 thousandths on the edge. At the end of the day, you have to experiment and find what works for you. Carry your own knives, test them, see how they hold up. But personally, if I were starting to make knives, making some kind of general knife, well, let's take this Tactics Armory Shadow that I'm in the middle of making here. I'm using one eighth inch stock, and the grind line comes up about three quarters of the way, maybe even four fifths of the way to the top at the widest point on the knife. And I'll take it down to about 12 to 15 thousandths on the edge. For a general use knife, that's maybe biased more towards sharpness than durability, but that's my choice as a knife maker. Point is, general use knife, you want a satisfactory compromise between cutting ability and durability. Okay. So we beat the theory to death. Let's get practical here. I'll walk you through a general process. I've showed variations of this in tons of videos, but I don't necessarily explain why I'm doing what I'm doing, so you'll sort of see that here. This knife here is my Tactics Armory Survivor. Nothing complex to this design at all. It'll have a cord-wrapped handle, just about as stupid simple as a knife can be. It's 1 8 of an inch thick, and about one inch wide at the thickest spot. For me, this is an ideal general size for a hunting knife or medium sized utility fixed blade. So I'll be making a bevel that's about five degrees. It'll climb up the edge roughly to three quarters to four fifths of the way to the top. 
and it'll be about 15 thou at the edge. Now that's all well and good in theory, but in practice, how do I get there? First thing I'll do is use this little scribe to scribe two lines down the edge. That will give me a rough guide as to how far down I want to grind so that I don't overshoot and make the bevels asymmetrical. I always want them exactly the same on both sides, both for aesthetic reasons and for functional reasons. It makes heat treating easier, it makes the knife function better, and so on. Next, I'll use this blue stuff, it's called layout fluid, and a divider to scribe the grind line that I'm aiming for. See how it runs parallel to the edge? As long as I maintain that parallelism, the bevel will remain exactly the same angle from one end to the other. If the bevel is skinnier here, that means the bevel will actually change angles, which I don't want to happen. Now, at this point, if you're doing it for the first time, you might want to use a file to file this bevel. I'll be using a belt grinder, but the principle's exactly the same. I just want to start cutting this angle. I'm maintaining that same angle against the platen. If I start cutting too much towards the edge, I rock back this way. If it's too shallow, I adjust the other way. Once I find an angle that seems to be working, I just feel it and hold it steady, 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 same angle, same angle, same angle, all the way through. The principle for using a file or a belt grinder, exactly the same. I find that angle, then I just keep grinding that angle until I've got the bevel all done. And I flip it over and go at it from the other side. Now there's a lot of technique involved that I'm not going to get into here. I've got plenty of other videos where I've done that. Generally speaking though, generally speaking though, what I try to do is grind almost all the way to where I'm aiming with a heavy grit belt like this Combat Abrasives 40 grit ceramic belt. Those 60 grit works fine too. Then I'll refine the lines moving up through 60, 120, and 220 grit belts. And that's where I'll stop before I heat treat. So, let's back up again and talk general points here. Before you get started, you always want to know what kind of knife you're trying to make, what it's going to be used for, what it's typically going to cut, and that's going to drive what bevel size you're making. If you're just getting off the ground as a knife maker, like I said, eighth inch stock grinding about three quarters of the way up the blade, that's four to five degrees off axis, great place to start. So I hope that was helpful to you. You know, I've got a whole playlist of videos about grinding uh, and several of them about bevels and beveling and so forth on the more practical side. Uh, but I hope a little bit of this theory uh, was also helpful to you in your knife making journey. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamones or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamones as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!